Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Cadix Loris FPV 4K HD recording split style camera. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, measure its latency and show you some flight footage. In addition, in the process of making this video, the Runcam Split 4 arrived at my doorstep and a side-by-side -side comparison of the Loris and the Split 4 should be up soon. In terms of packaging, along with the Cadex Loris, you're getting a nano to micro-sized rubber camera adapter, a noise the control board that will enable you to set up the camera, a 1.5mm hex key and screws that will enable you to mount the camera with and without the adapter, and finally an adapter that will enable you to mount the Loris board on 20x20 20 20 stacks. In terms of specs, the dimensions of the camera unit of the Loris are 14x14x22mm. 14 by 14 by it features an M8 1.8mm lens and a 16x9 800 TV line CMOS sensor. Its coaxial connector is covered by a plastic protector and the camera unit is connected to the main board using a 6cm long coaxial cable. These tiny Phillips screws also secure the camera sensor, so in case you need to open the case, make sure not to bring dust inside. As for the main board, it is using 25 by 25 mm toothpick style mounting holes. On the back of the board, which is not a very convenient location because it can be blocked by the frame, you can find this button which will enable you to turn on or off the camera and also start and stop the recording. You should note that even if you are going to power off the camera without pressing this button, the video footage is still going to be saved to the microSD card. It features a new type of an onboard microphone. Its onboard microSD card slot supports up to 128GB microSD cards. It comes with pre-soldered camera and OSD control board connectors, and its supported DC input voltage is between 5 to 18 volts. In addition, its outer dimensions are 293 by 289 by 38 mm The weight of the camera unit on its own is 5.5 grams. Including the nano to micro adapter, it weighs 6.7 grams and including the 6cm long coaxial cable, it weighs 6.1 grams. The total weight of the Cadex Loris is 11.6 grams, including the camera and OSD control board connectors, so it's 1.4 grams heavier than the Runcam Split 4, and 2.3 grams heavier than the Cadex Baby Turtle. The highlight of the Cadex Loris is its ability to record videos at 4K 60 frames per second, which is actually upscaled from a 3.5K video, and the other supported recording modes are 4K 30 frames per second, 2.7K 60 frames per second and 1080p 90 and 60 frames per second. As for setting up the camera, it is done using the provided OSD control board and short pressing the joystick will bring up the configuration menu. Over here, under the OSD setting, you'll be able to set the display name and choose whether to display the voltage and time on the on-screen display. Under the video option, you'll be able to set the recording resolution. The default option is 4K 60 frames per second and as I mentioned before, you can also set it to 4K 30 frames per second, 2.7K 60 frames per second, and 1080p 90 and 60 frames per second. You can set the loop video option, which is by default set to off, to 1 or 5 minutes, and you can turn on or off the auto recording option, which is by default set to on. So once the camera is going to be powered up, it's going to start recording. Under camera settings, you can set the exposure, set the field of view to high, which is the default option, medium or narrow, you can flip the screen and set the light frequency according to your country. Next, under image effect, you can set the saturation, sharpness, contrast and brightness. The TV system option will enable you to set the camera either to NTSC, which is the default option, or you can set it to PAL. Under system settings, you can set the auto boot to on, which is the default option, or you can turn it off, and if you set it to off by accident or on purpose, you will need to long press the button on the camera board in order to power up the camera. The language of the settings can be set either to English or Chinese. If an SD card is present, you'll be able to see its information and you'll be able also to format it. Under system information, you'll be able to see the firmware version that the camera is flashed with. And if you'd like to set the camera to its default settings, you can perform a factory reset. Finally, next to TV ratio, you can set the aspect ratio of the camera either to 16x9, which is the default option, or 4x3. As for the FPV camera latency, according to Cradix it is 40 milliseconds, and according to my test it's about 35 milliseconds when the camera is set to NTSC and 40 milliseconds when it is set to PAL. After testing out the Cradix Loris using the default settings, I can tell you that in my opinion the video is a little bit too sharp, so the sharpness value should be reduced, 
and the quality of the FPV footage, which I'm going to also test on a separate video, does not match, of course, the one of the Cadix Telzier, which is using a dedicated lens for FPV, but still it is adequate for slow and whoop style flying. The next thing that I've done is to mount the Cadix Loris on the Ishin Lal 3 micro quadcopter, and since I experienced some VTX issues, I'm only going to show you the HD footage, and the analog one is going to be included on my upcoming side by side comparison video. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.